Sure, why not? That's the well-dressed Todd Stevens to you. Yeah. By the way. I like the Deftone shirt in the background to you on the rail. Hey. I own that shirt. Do you actually? I do. Nice. I'm not wearing it right now, though. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Noted. Here's a Monastery of Swift Spear off of a sacred foundry. Get that die out there. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> the, it was a Tormogoyf die. <laughs> That's a monster Swiss spear tie. I love it. A little yep. ingenuity. Yep. Got to get in here for one. Got to let you know how much I'm attacking for. Back to David Houghton we're going to go. Curious about how his burn matchup is. He's going to start with an ally encampment into a 1-2 of his own. <laughs> It'll be a hot of free play. Well, I think the jig is up. Oh, you think he's giving away what he's playing? Yeah. It could be a slight both, splash. To be fair, both players probably at sure. this point. Sure. So we saw in our match earlier with David Houghton when he played it against Jeskai. He was able to just easily go through a bunch of removal. Yeah, no big deal. Like it was that he had a young pyromancer, did his opponent, did his opponent David Thomas going the entire game, and Hot was easily able to work through all of that stuff. Now, Swiss is going to come into the red zone again. Stevens is going to search up a stomping ground off of that wooded foothill, so it'll take some more damage. And I think we might have a Searing Blaze on the way. We'll find out here in just a moment. Could be a Tarkus command. Could be a bevy of things. Look, it's going to be a Tarkus command. So a little pump, a little ding. So only five damage total from this Tarkus command. So kind of on the low end from what we've seen today. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Not a very good card. Pretty weak. Head back David Houghton's way. He's at 13. He's going to a second turn of the game. Does have a Temple Garden in hand? There's a Kabira Evangel. Now, this Allies deck does have ways to gain life. There's another copy of Alley Encampment. Uh, there's the Blade Whirl. We saw this be really good in the Jeskai matchup. Yeah. Uh, first Strike, not super relevant here. Not a ton of blocking going on. But Grizzly Bear, perfectly serviceable. Yeah, and it does pump up the Hot of Free Blade into a 2-3, which allowed Attack for 2. Now, Stevens is also down to 13, as he's dealt himself quite a bit of damage. There's a mountain. And we'll see what's next here for Todd. Well, it doesn't look like he can kill this turn, but it seems like he has a pretty easy kill on the following turn. It'll be another copy of a Tarkus command. It's another big chunk of life. We might have another spell here, too. Yeah, it's going to be a lightning bolt. Yeah, you said he might be able to kill next turn. I think it's a lock because he's got a Boros Charm in hand. The trick here is not to die or don't have Houghton gain life. Yeah, no Lantern Scout yeah, is basically what he's hoping for. Pretty much. Didn't get a great look at the draw step. He's going to sacrifice this uh, this Windswept Teeth pretty quickly, though. Got to get a basic plane. So does he have Lantern Scout this turn? It's a two of in his deck. If he has it here, it might just be a game winner. Three mana? I think so. Yeah, yeah, it is a Lantern Scout. How about that? So there's five. Yep. Going to give his creatures lifelink. He's going to get some life back here. Stevens will draw. Now, Stevens can still win this turn. Searing Blaze is ideal. It's going to be a Goblin Guide, however. Yeah, so now he's a point short. And since he was, he was two points over, or he was one point over on the last turn, so maybe he didn't need to use the Atarkus Command main phase? Maybe if he just held that for the Can't Gain Life ability on it? Well, what's notable here is if there are no blocks here from Houghton, Stevens will kill him. He's got Boris Charm in hand. It is true. Yeah. Now the reveal is a calm battle singer. Which is lethal on the crackback. Yep. So, I mean, David at this point might be just more interested in blocking because neither player is really going to get an extra turn. It appears he's very interested in blocking as he's going to grab the Lantern Scout and put it in front of a Swift Spear. So this, this can be kind of disastrous if he does have a removal spell for the Blade Whirl, and then David no longer has lethal. He's got a lot to think about now, how he wants to go about blocking here. It's like, well, if I block and you have a Tarkus Command, then I'm not dead. If you have two bolts, I'm dead no matter what. Yep. So you can just you can just knock two bolts out of the equation. Looks like he's going to jump in front of Goblin Guide. Yeah, Boros Charm is still a point short. Yep.
Todd Stevens perhaps not expecting the Lantern Scouts. No, no. They never see it coming, Cedric. <laughs> they, they really don't. The Lantern Scout or the Allies deck. I think Stevens is just going to have to say damage is going to resolve here. Because Boros Charming is not going to do very much. So, Guide will trade with Lantern Scout. Now, here's the thing. If you're David Houghton, I'm playing around basically nothing. Because if, if my opponent had a rule, so he probably would have killed my Lantern Scout and then killed me. Uh, maybe. I mean, he might not have had seven points, right? Sure. So it's possible he just has a removal spell. But if he has a removal spell, eh, you know, like, wh what are you doing? Do you really want to give the burn deck another draw step? It's an Akawa Battle Singer. Your favorite. Oh, it's strong. I'm a fan. I'm in the club. And now here's another Hot of Free Blade. Yeah, another ally just makes it really easy. Yep. That's so much damage. Double first strike. Here yeah. we go. The Free Blade plus another creature is lethal. Yep. And it's very unlikely that the burn deck can take out the Hot of Free Blade. So. <laughs> David Houghton going to win game number one here over Todd Stevens. Allies up a game here over Burn. Stevens came up one point short as he goes to the sideboard. And we're going to go that direction as well. We will start with Todd Stevens in his Path Exile. Rest in peace. Searing Blood, two copies of Rending Volley, three core Firewalkers, three Molten Rains, and four copies of Destructive Revelry. So... Rending Volley is, is pretty obviously a thing if, if the burn deck is interested in just killing the creatures. I'm not sure if that is what Todd Stevens wants to be doing, though. Uh, past that, I think Searing Blood is definitely a card that you want, something that kills a creature and deals them damage. Uh, and then Path to Exile kind of feels like another Rending Volley to me. I think you just want the Searing Blood, and that might just be it. On David Houghton's side, he's got three paths of his own, two Kataki War Wage, two Return to the Ranks, a Stony Silence Choke, a Chameleon Colossus, a Fire Mantle Mage, then two Spell Skites, and two Andu Cleric. Love the Undo Cleric. Yeah, most people don't even know what Undo Cleric is. One dub, one one. Yes. Whenever an ally enters the battlefield under your control, yes. gain life equal to the number of allies? Correct. Or is it creatures? Number of allies. Okay. Only checks allies. Beautiful. Very well done, Jerry. Uh, and then maybe some paths to kill the early creatures. Take out Goblin Guide, Swiss Spear, maybe Eidolon. Any reason for Spell Sky here? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, the, you know, is the thing, like, the fact that random things like Spell Scout are just hanging out in everyone's sideboard, is that reason enough to just bring in a couple destructive revelries in the dark? Like, what if what if the ally deck just has, like, Leyline of Sanctity in its sideboard? Oh, I'm just dead, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, personally, I'm not going to hedge against Leyline from this deck because I've seen Lantern Scout, and because of all my ally knowledge, yeah. I know that Andu Cleric is a card, too, so I imagine they're going to go towards the ally-based life gain instead of Leyline. Now, for what it's worth, if that's my thinking and they go to Leyline, then they got me. Yeah, sure. You know, then they, they tricked me and then I lose. But I would be okay losing that way. Instead of, like, having a revelry and then drawing it and just having me dead in my hand. Well, if, if you're familiar with Modern at all and you know that these decks have Cavern of Souls and Ally Encampment, you got to imagine that they're also playing Aether Vial. Yeah. So it's not like your revelry is necessarily dead entirely. That's right? very true. You, you might have a thing to actually tag with it. That's very true. I forgot about Vile being in the deck, and you can definitely kill that with Referee. But is it worth bringing in one copy, two copy? You're not going to bring in all four. No. That's way too many. But will you bring in a couple? Potentially. And I suppose we'll find out once Stevens does present and takes a look at his opening hand. Perhaps we'll get a look at his deck with a fetch line or something of that nature. But while these players do shuffle up here for game numero dos, we are going to talk about the innovator, the Hall of Famer, the Pro Tour champion, the two-time world's runner-up. It's Patrick Chapin. It's the Next Level Library. Next Level Magic and Next Level Deck Building for all skill levels. Available in paperback and ebook, And, of course, available now at StarCityGames.com slash Next Level. Do you have any copies of these books? I do. Very nice. Uh, I was reading Next Level Deck Building uh, during the open in Portland. And that, that book is heavy. It is sizable. It is, it is not something to just, like, lug around in your, you know, purse. In my case, it was, you know, the, mess <laughs> the messenger bag, yes. the man purse. The purse. The purse, Right, yes. there you go. And it's like, man, that's heavy. That's like three decks. It's, it's a... <laughs> I like that you equate things. <laughs> I like that you equate things to how many how many decks they weigh. So so the Merce <laughs> with a deck in it is not that heavy. But you know, once you get like a box full of, full of cards, <laughs> you know, it's pretty heavy. It's like uh, one one copy of next level deck building. You have your own weight system. <laughs> yes. It's three decks. So how many notebooks is that? How many notebooks is next level deck building? It was, it was like ten. Yeah, it's like ten notebooks. No, the, the book is just very high quality. It is very, very good. No surprise there from Patrick Chapin.
How to free blade off of Cavern Souls is where David Houghton's going to start. You saw Todd Stevens start from the Monastery Swiss, but you're very reminiscent of game number one is how game number two does begin. For Stevens, he does have a second land to play. He's just deciding which one it's going to be. It looks like it's a Bloodstained Mire and something else he's deciding between. Yeah, he fetched out a basic mountain to start, so that can kind of give you some in information on the rest of his hand. Either he only needs stuff of one color, or he already has other dual lands in his hand, perhaps more fetch lands. Yep. This is a Goblin Guide. I love the double attack. Stomping ground is the reveal. You don't block on the Swiss Spear here? Oh, I would have blocked. Yeah? I no, no fear for the mutagenic growth? No, I would have snapped him off. I assume if it was a gut shot, it would have just taken out the Hot of Free Blade. Yeah, with the trigger on the stack? Right. Sure. Oh, it looks like he's going to... Yeah, there you go. That guy's sneaking a point of damage on me. I ain't no punk. <laughs> Blocking every time. Todd Anderson School of Magic. Really? Todd is the person you went to with that. He blocks, dude. Todd blocks. Todd, you do not sneak points of damage against Todd. He will snap you off. That's good to know. Yeah. Not, uh, <laughs> okay, so fetch up another basic mountain. That's also kind of telling. That is notable with the deck that does have a Tarkus Command and Boros Charm in it. I mean, it is possible that he sided out all of his white cards, right? Like, maybe he just cut the Boros Charms. Okay, all right. Because Boros Charm doesn't really interact very much. Yeah, it is just two mana, four damage. Maybe you're looking for something better. Or maybe that's the card that you cut for just more interaction. He does have Sacred Foundry in hand right now, too. Okay. For what it's worth. And, an, and another copy of Wooded Foothills. Yeah, so he has access to all three of his colors. Okay. Windswept Teeth here from Houghton. He's going to sacrifice that. And there is a basic forest. We'll see what's next here for David. Perhaps an Orn Reef Survivalist is on the way. I love allies. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. 2-2, two, two, free blade up and do a 2-3. If you play allies, do not leave home without your dice. True. I was that guy when I played allies. Yeah, hey, you got any dice I could borrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you need, one? No, like six. Yeah, I <laughs> need as many as you have, actually. Rift Bolt's coming off. Free blade down. Yeah, I like I like just clearing the way here. Trying to, you know, Todd is kind of flooded a little bit. He has four land, which is a lot for the burn deck. And I think he needs to rely on his creatures to deal the bulk of the damage this game. Searing Blaze. That's probably the best card in the matchup. Okay. And now Swift, play, Swift Spear, excuse me, going to come across for three. Because Rift Bolt also came off to spend this turn. Now mm -hmm. Goblin Guy going to reveal Windswept Heath. Yes. And Steven's last two cards in hand, Sacred Foundry and a Tarkus Command. That's, that's not a bad two. No. On to Cleric, the draw here for Houghton. That's good. It's not great when your opponent's killing all your creatures, unfortunately. You got to kill them. You saw Lantern scout the last game, so you don't want that to happen again. Yeah, definitely. And On to Cleric does basically the same thing. So we'll see how Houghton wants to kind of sequence his spells this turn. Yeah, if you just let the ally deck run wild, some crazy stuff is going to happen. Yeah. It's a critical mass deck. They want to have as many allies in, on the battlefield as possible, kind of like Goblins does in Merfolk and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Really just most tribal decks. Slivers. Yeah. It's an important one. Can't leave that out. You a Slivers fan? Well, no. It's just like the tribal deck that popped up the most recently in Modern. That's true. That's true when you were in Cincinnati. Basic planes here from Houghton. He's down to seven. It looks like it is on do cleric time. Trigger gain of life. So not super impressive for a sideboard card. It can be good. It's just not great right now. Now, if that thing can stay on the battlefield for a little while, you're gaining way too much life. I think there might be a free blade to follow up. No. That's just going to be a vile. Yep. Mm. Just an Aether Vile. If he gets an untap, though, and gets to play out two allies, trigger onto Cleric twice, gain two and three life. Yep. I mean, I, I just don't think he's necessarily going to make it through this turn with the Atarkus Command looming. Uh, if onto Cleric is relegated to chump block duty, that's certainly no fun. Yeah, I'm curious to see, because Stevens has Atarkus Command in hand, I think very clearly he's going to draw his card and, you know, attack. 
or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if Houghton is just going to kind of cross his fingers and hope he's not dead. Well, there's another goblin guy. Yeah. So I guess we'll cast a spell for combat yep. There's Goblin Guide. Here come the beatdowns. Two Goblin Guide triggers are on the stack. And then it just doesn't even matter what David does at this point. Nope. It will be all over. The Cohen Battle Singer was the reveal. David. Yeah, I, I would be interested to see if the Goblin Guide did not come off the top, whether David would block or not. Because if he, if he does block, sure, he doesn't die to a Tarkus Command that turn. But if Todd has a Tarkus Command, He's probably going to win the game anyway. Yeah. So is is David more likely to win or lose the game if he blocks? I think he's more likely to to win if he just does not block, keeps his onto cleric, and the game proceeds from there. And now the decision is much less interesting because whether he blocks or not, he's dead to a Tarkus command. So. Yeah. Well, he's gonna. Do a little math here before blocking. Hope he's not dead. And now Todd will show him a Tarkus command. Plus one, plus one, and you take three. And with prowess from Swift Spear, that'll be more than enough to get the job done. So Todd Stevens is going to win game number two here against David Houghton. Burn and Allies getting ready for game number three. So Allies being on the play seems like a pretty big deal. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the bigger you get to make your Hata Free Blades and your Oran Reef Survivalist, maybe get them out of Searing Blood, Searing Blaze range. Uh, it seems pretty important for this matchup. I would be absolutely thrilled about being on the play right now. And Houghton, looks like he's going back to the sideboard right away. See if his configuration is something he's happy with. But appears he is pleased enough with what he's got. Todd Stevens also going to go back to the board. It is notable uh, that, you know, you noticed that Todd was not searching for non-basics there. Maybe he has bored out those white cards. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he did have the Sacred Foundry in his hand, but David did not know that. Yeah. He never had to play it. He was aggressively searching up just basic planes. So we'll see if that's something that happens in the next games. Maybe yes, maybe no. But in the meantime, we are going to talk about the Fall Creature Collection here with Star City Games. And the popular line of products that include the Hippo, the Otter, the Reindeer, and of course, Pangolian Click on Playmat Sleeves and Player Bundles. That's the fall collection. That's going to take us through the end of the year. And then at the beginning of next year, 2016, somehow it's almost already here, we'll have our, uh, we'll have our winter collection. You guys can look forward to that. StarCityGames.com slash Creature Collection for more information about these playmat sleeves and bundles. Again, the Hippo, the Otter, the Reindeer, and Penguilian Click. What is it? What's the new one? Just tell me. No. I won't tell anyone, I no. swear. Stop it. <laughs> Don't do this. thought we were friends, it's man. It's a dinosaur. A there. dinosaur. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. Beautiful animal dinosaur. <laughs> it's Alpha Turnix. <laughs> it's ready to attack. Six five for six. It's Fangren Hunter, my favorite green creature. Card is awesome. Put it in your deck. <laughs> if you see it, <laughs> take it. Put it in your deck. I actually just took that advice to heart. Yeah. So, never pass. I remember Grand Prix Columbus. Well, that's every tournament that you remember all for the wrong reasons. <laughs> well, I started 10 0 in that tournament. Yeah, so. <laughs> and, you didn't, and you didn't top it. It's, it's all for the wrong reasons. Well, I got a match loss. They're, they're a little more strict back then about deck reg errors. They're still pretty strict about it. Dude, straight match what? loss. Oh, I didn't know it was a, stri oh, it was a straight match loss. Yeah. Thing? Oh, ugh. Yeah, yeah, they didn't mess around. That was a little much. I mean, granted, it's my fault, but it's yeah. still. Wow. I didn't know it was a straight match loss then. I forgot. And then you got Savage beat down. That is true. That was one of my winning ends. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, the, my match loss was against Mike Turian. I don't know how well you know Mike, but... You're talking about me or the audience? You. Uh, of course I know Mike. Okay, I said I don't know how well you know Mike. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I know Mike really well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know you worked with him at R&D and stuff, so you probably know him better than I do. But... Uh, no, he was he was working on Magic Online stuff. Okay. So interacted with him very little, but uh, just super nice guy. You know, sat down. I got the match lost, and he's just like, oh, you know, that kind of stinks for you. you Want to grab lunch? I was like, yeah, sure. Just like I'd never met him before. But he's just like, hey, random guy, want to just have lunch with me? I was like, yeah. Mike Tarion is a big part of the reason I play competitive Magic. Okay, I might have heard this before. At, What's the deal? At Origins, I played against him in, like, when I was, like, 14 or 15 or something. I played against him with just some brew I had or whatever, and I was starting to, like, kind of understand how to play Magic. And I beat him. And I knew that he was my Turian or whatever. And after I beat him, he was just like, hey, you played really well. You should, you should play Magic more. 
Okay. And he was just super nice the entire time when he was like, man, screw it. I was just flame tongue convoing all his crap or whatever. <laughs> I was like, thanks, man. That's really nice of you. And then I beat him and I ran to my friends. I'm like, I just beat my turn. Oh my God. He was super nice to me. Here comes Goblin Guy. So yeah, he's actually one of the reasons I play competitive magic. Do you think Mike knows that? Yeah, I've told him. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cavern of Souls is how things started here for David Houghton. Players David Cordero. That's a windswept heath. Come to the main event stage. Down to 19 goes David Houghton. So another fetch of a basic mountain. So kind of interesting. It's notable. Yeah. It's notable. I mean, it's one of those things where maybe there's not a lot you can do with that information because, you know, the game is over by turn four one way or the other probably in this matchup. Sure. Two aggressive decks just slogging it out. Houghton's thinking basic planes, but he's not too sure. All right, he's going to go with basic planes. Now, Vile's on one. That means how to free blade and a couple other cards. Yeah, I think this is where you want to be against the burn deck. You just have the capability to explode. You know, just like put a bunch of permanents in play. Burn doesn't have the mana or necessarily the resources to take care of all that stuff. Uh, just go from there. Two mana, maybe. Looks like he might lead out with free blade. Yep. That'll be a one, two. Looks like he's got a handful of free yeah. blades. Yeah. Might be three of them? Yeah. And so I think he's going to play the other one, make a two, three. I'm a little... So he's got to do a weird balancing act because he's got one free blade. He also has Undo Cleric in hand. Yeah, so I think he just wants to save the ally to get the other Undo Cleric trigger. Yeah. Land number two for Todd Stevens is a Bloodstained Mire. He'll sacrifice that, fall down to 18. We'll see what Lanny wants to search up. It's been mountains recently. Well, now it's the stomping ground. All right. So. Now, one thing, one thing we don't know is if maybe he has Destructive Revelry in his deck after sideboard. He has four of those in there. Kind of speculate on the fact that he might bring some in. Seems a little worse on the draw, especially since you saw Lantern Scout in game one and Undo Cleric in game two. So you know that he has some life gain stuff that is just tied up in the ally theme. Sure. Right? So then how much other stuff can he have? Do you think he has Ley Lines and Spell Skites and all this stuff? Probably not. And if he does, maybe not a lot of it. Yeah, how badly do you want to... How badly do you want to destroy stuff like Leyline and, and other options like that? And how badly does David Houghton actually want to be like burned? Has he gone over the top with yeah, all this hate? That is entirely possible. Some people just really don't like losing to certain decks. How to free blade coming in through the vial. This could be a really nice turn here for David. He'll get to untap. He's at 12, but it looks like he's going to be gaining some life this turn. Vile might be going up, and it is up to two. So. Goblin Guide has given David two extra lands. And with his land from the draw step, he has one land left over. So it looked like he kept a one land or two. Fortunate reveals from the Goblin Guide. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, now he just wants to figure out how he wants to sequence this. Do I want to lead off with the free blades so the free blades will get bigger? Do I want to cast one of these Undo Clerics? You can see he's pretty unsure of himself. Yeah, I think at this point I might want bigger free blades, but it's close, you know? Well, he's going to he's gonna violent on Duke Cleric. Free blade will trigger, so will on Duke Cleric, so he's going to gain two life up to 14. Next up. Looks like it's another free blade. So this will enter the battlefield. It'll get a counter. Other how to free blade will get a counter, and now on Duke Cleric will trigger. He gained three life. Now you have a 3-4 blocker, a Vial going up to 3 next turn that can put the Evangel into play. And a fourth land for Collective Company. Yeah, so I think next turn, like this turn was good, don't get me wrong, but yeah. I think next turn is going to be busted. Yeah. Stopping around the draw here for Stevens. And heaven forbid you find another Undo Cleric or Lantern Scout off the Collective Company. Yeah. And I think it's probably just over. Stopping around is going to come in onto the battlefield untapped. Searing Blaze. Take that on, do Cleric. <laughs> Down to 14 goes Houghton. Mm -hmm. eh, it's kind of like a break even. Houghton's still up two life on the exchange. Yep. However, these Goblin Guides are now on defense. 
that's not where they want to be. No. I mean, 3-4 th is just too tough to get through. So no more on you, Cleric. So no more extra life gain necessarily. Looks like Alley Encampment was the draw. And now a Collected Company. So we're we were, we were four six. for four on Collected Company hits. Yeah, Collected Company has not been shy. And it's not going to be shy here either. There, oh my, this game is over. Is that six creatures? Uh, well, it is six creatures. Uh, I believe one of them is a Lantern Scout and one of them is Andu Cleric, so this game is over. And you saw David reveal it, and Todd got to look at it. So this one is probably over. Yeah, like you even have the option of taking a Spell Scout. Maybe you want the <laughs> Battle Singer. Yeah. You know, how much, how much life do you want to gain this turn versus, you know, what kind of clock do you want to put on the burn deck? I think deck? he's going to take the Battle Singer. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Because now he also gets the violin of Angel. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, okay, this might just be lethal then. Yeah. I feel like I've said that a lot <laughs> yeah, watching with, this deck play. With the Battle Singer involved, it seems like it always is lethal. Keep in mind, those free blades are also going to get two counters. And it's time for beatdowns. You could put the Evangel into play, pro red. And yeah, before yeah, that's, blocks. That's got to be good, but. I just want to kill him. All these creatures do have lifelink. I. So it's 14 right now. Yeah, and he's going to do this. He's going to do this before blocks. Yeah, 14 lifelink, unblockable, you're dead. Another battle singer trigger. Pro red. Two more triggers. And no blocks allowed, probably. As, as long as he did it, as long as he did pre blocks, Vantual will come in and give everything pro red. There will be no blocks allowed. I mean, this, to be fair, even if he didn't, you know, like, what's, yeah, what's going to happen? You're at 30. Yeah, still dead. Still dead. Oh, hold on. Let me move my Hot of Free Blades Hey, up. hey, hey. Don't miss your triggers. It's important yeah. to have good sequencing. And that is going to do it. David Houghton's going to win this match over Todd Stevens. Two games to one. Allies taking down Burn. Allies is 7-1 and one here in Dallas. What did he lose to? That's a really good question, actually. So we were talking a little bit about how he seemed pretty light on anti-burn stuff, just the two Lantern Scouts, the two Ondu Clerics, and the Spell Scouts kind of count too. Yeah, sort of. But it really didn't seem that tough. Like, Hot of Freeblade gets very big very quickly. Battle Singer presents a very real clock, and his deck just has a pretty natural turn four kill, it looks like. So this is bad news now, because like, I'm playing Grand Prix Pittsburgh a couple of weeks from now. And you're playing Allies? <sighs> Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, talk to David here. Maybe get some advice. Always have Ari Lax. Yeah. I'm liking I'm liking a lot that's going on here, man. Like how to free blade grows really fast. You got Vile. I don't know if you're the best Vile deck, because Merfolk's a really good Vile deck, but you're <laughs> you're a really good Vile deck. You're a really good collect company deck.